All right. Uh, we are here just like we are every day for our 5 o'clock update on the coronavirus. Uh, I'm assisted today by Virginia and by Kenneth. I want to start the way I start every day, uh, but this time I want us to do it together. Uh, every day I start by saying we will get through this. We will get through this together. But I want all of you out there to say it with me. It may seem hokey, but this is about us being committed. It's about us believing it. And it's about us being sure that we are doing everything that it's going to take to protect those around us. So say it with me. We will get through this. We will get through this together. One more time. We will get through this. We will get through this together. Folks, as you know, uh, the next two to three weeks, we believe, are going to be absolutely critical in this battle against the coronavirus. This is the time where we do everything we can through social distancing and through being healthy at home to make sure that we flatten this curve and that we do not see what we see going on in New York or California or Michigan or so many other places. We know what we're up against if we can look um, at those states and see potentially a week or two weeks in the future, and we can make sure it won't be our reality here. So it is incredibly important that we recommit today to follow the guidance, to be a good neighbor, to make sure that we can serve resources, and that we do everything that it takes to make sure when we see the surge, and we will, we are already uh, increasing uh, day by day, uh, that we have the health care capacity to help everyone uh, that needs it. And we need everybody's best, everybody's best, even better uh, than we've gotten. And let me tell you, I've been so proud to be your governor uh, these last several weeks, seeing so many people sacrifice so much, give up so much, but know it is for the greater good. I've been so proud uh, to be your governor. But knowing what's on the line in the next two to three weeks, we need even more. And that may be tougher for some of those that are on uh, borders with other states, uh, like Tennessee. And we are seeing uh, other states that may not have uh, the same restrictions uh, and commitment that we do uh, have numerous cases just south of the border. Just remember, if your small businesses in your counties are sacrificing, if you simply drive over the border to another state and have all the contacts we're trying to stop, you frustrate the sacrifice of those in your community. So we need everybody to be their very best in the coming weeks. I will tell you the health and the lives of numerous Kentuckians depend on it. I'm counting on you, but I also believe in you. I know we can do this. We're just going to have to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. But what it's going to mean is so much uh, for the health and safety of those around us. I've asked uh, every week, every day, every day, uh, for folks to fill up social media with the type of modeling behavior that we want to see. You know, in times that we have to uh, stay apart physically, it can be emotionally, physically, uh, intellectually difficult uh, for us in our daily lives. But the more that we can get out the type of behaviors that we want to see, uh, the better, and we want to encourage it from each and every Kentuckian. Remember, it is your duty as a Kentuckian, but it is your patriotic duty as an American, and the health and lives of other people depend on it. So all we're asking you to do is to follow that guidance. So let's look at a couple of, of good examples that we have. It's coming. All right, I'll come back to it. Uh, let me say a couple of extra thank yous that wouldn't be in this. I want to thank every Kentuckian for their sacrifice, every Kentuckian who is following the things that we are asking for. Thank you for what you are doing. I want to thank um, our businesses out there that have changed their practices, have shut their doors, the organizations uh, that have made those uh, key sacrifices where they put their people uh, above their profits. Thank you uh, 
uh, for truly believing uh, in us. I want to thank everybody who's donating the personal protective equipment. For instance, the state-operated area technology centers and the Kentucky School for the Blind uh, donated 9,727 in 95 masks, 619 face shields, 1,593 boxes of gloves, 1,976 gowns, 954 boxes of surgical masks, and on and on. And in the horse capital of the world, uh, we also had a group of veterinarians that came together knowing the need was so great here for our people and making sure that they provided all the PPE that they had or, or could provide uh, to us. I want to thank all of the TV and radio groups uh, that have truly stepped it up, especially these last four or five days. Since we have put out the call knowing we are in crunch time, I have seen more PSAs, I've seen more coverage from you, and I know more of you are getting these briefings out to people. It is so important to be connected right now. It's one of the reasons we do this at 5 o'clock every day. It is not just our recommitment but our connection to each other, and it just gives us one moment. So to everybody out there carrying it or just carrying the message, uh, thank you for doing that. I want to thank all of our houses of worship, churches, synagogues, mosques that are following the guidance and that are committed uh, to making sure that we do this as long as it takes to protect uh, their flocks and their congregations. I want to thank everybody who's ringing their bells every day at 10 a.m. And we got a lot of people out there that aren't going to work right now because of orders that I've had to make to protect our people. And we got a lot of people out there that live alone. Ringing those bells every day reminds all of us that we are not alone. And again, we are in this uh, together. I want to thank our frontline heroes, our healthcare workers. Uh, you all are amazing. Every day you're amazing. You see around the country what's coming and you still go to work every single day to do the right thing. We need you so much, but we appreciate you uh, so much. To our first responders, who we've had at least a couple now uh, test positive for the coronavirus, you knew uh, that, that you were at risk for exposure. Thank you uh, for what you are doing. I want to thank the teachers who are finding new ways every day to connect with their students, and I want to thank the maintenance staff and the cleaning staff for every facility across Kentucky. You have never been uh, more needed than you are now. Are we ready for a little bit of that social media, Kenneth? All right, here we go. This is uh, UofL Labor and Delivery Healthcare Workers. Uh, they are proud of what they are doing. We are proud of what they are doing too. Listen, they go into work right now and face the risk of the coronavirus each day. We ought to be able to stay at home, limit our contacts, and ensure that we do everything we can to protect them. Next one. These are more uh, donations of the personal protective equipment. We're seeing it every day and keep it up. Look for ways, uh, find equipment that's out there that isn't being used otherwise right now. We can use every single bit of it. And let me tell you, every bit that's donated matters uh, to the life of a Kentuckian. Next one. I like this one. You know, it, it's that um, Kentuckians are finding ways every day uh, to not only uh, keep themselves uh, emotionally, uh, physically strong, uh, but having that chance to connect or reconnect to our kids and keeping them on a schedule. As a dad of kids that are, that are older than this, it is really important in these times of anxiety, and even if you don't think they're listening, they're listening, and they can feel it from you, and they can feel it from you. Having these types of activities and the type of schedule is so incredibly important right now. And let's not forget that in the midst of the, the coronavirus, there are uh, folks out there that have faced uh, other obstacles or other challenges. They have overcome it, just like we will overcome uh, the coronavirus. Uh, this is an individual getting out uh, with her kids, uh, getting that exercise. What I love here is if you're going to go outside, this is how we have to do it. It's about going out as a family unit. Notice they are not on a playground with a bunch of other kids. Notice they are not on a basketball court with a bunch of other kids. If you are going to a park and playing a game of basketball, you are spreading the coronavirus right now. If you are coming together in a campground, which we're hearing about in our state parks, you are spreading the coronavirus. And I will tell you when we get into our report tonight, 
we have the first positive test uh, for an individual that, that was in a nursing home. And guess what? The virus went to her. So remember, if you're out there flaunting the rules, you may be passing something to someone else who goes home and passes it to their parent who works in one of these environments where people are the most vulnerable. Your failure to follow the directions can cause major consequences to other people. So all we have to do is be a good neighbor. And that's harder depending maybe on, on where we are in life, but we truly, we truly have to encourage and push as much as we can uh, for every individual out there, follow the guidance and be that good uh, neighbor. Going to move into our report uh, for today. Uh, and this will be um, our, our single largest uh, increase in a day, uh, though it is not escalating as quickly as, as other states. And I'm proud to report today that we have no new deaths, um, though we will have somebody who is holding on the next couple days and, and we are afraid we may lose. Uh, so as of today, we believe we have 248 uh, positive tests of the coronavirus, which is 50 uh, new cases. Uh, we have at least two in Boone, one in Callaway, two in Christian, two in Clark, one in Davis, nine in Fayette, one in Harrison, one in Hopkins, 14 in Jefferson, four in Jessamine, two in Madison, one in Mason, one in Mercer, one in Pulaski, one in Union, one in Webster. And we have six that are unconfirmed. Remember, with more labs coming on each day and having different times that those labs report to us, our numbers at different times will be ahead or behind of other sources that come in. My goal is to give you the absolute best um, number that I can each and every day, uh, but it will change. And I do want to say that there are people of all ages that are getting the coronavirus in Kentucky. You know, I've said before that especially kids seem resilient. That's resilient to the harm. It is not resilient to having the virus. And it still can harm people of, of all ages, so it's really important, especially for our young adults and for our teens, to know the consequences their actions can have. So tomorrow, uh, we're going to have another video to start. It's going to be for a slightly older group. They won't be the preschoolers. I believe this one is elementary, uh, a little bit older in the elementary. And then we're going to have more as we go. And, and I understand that our young adults and, and teens and, and others They've never faced anything like this before, and it's asking a whole lot of them. It's probably asking uh, more than, than someone that age um, should be able uh, to, to comprehend. And that's not speaking down to anybody. It's none of us have seen this before. I haven't. And it's changing all of our worldviews, uh, but it's also going to call on, on all of us to do uh, that much uh, more. Uh, not included in our uh, list that I just gave you, uh, but we do have confirmation um, that a 90-year-old uh, man in, uh, Perry, in a Perry County nursing home uh, has tested positive. Uh, that person is no longer in the home. Uh, they are taking steps um, at that home right now. We don't have uh, more information. We believe that the local health department, the county judge, and the others are doing everything they can. Uh, we appreciate their leadership, uh, and, and we should wait until we have uh, more information. It's a moment, if you're in Perry County, if you're in Hazard or the surrounding county, do breathe. Um, it, it's not suggesting that if your loved one is there, uh, that they have it. Uh, we will do everything we can. Uh, we will test uh, anyone that, that we ultimately uh, have to there. Uh, we're going to be there for everybody. But it ought to be a reminder that something as small as uh, playing that basketball game, thinking you're invincible, it might uh, be the case for you, but if you have it and you spread it and someone goes home to someone who works with vulnerable uh, adults or, or children, uh, that could be uh, what does it. So because of that, I am going to be asking our county judges and our mayors um, to very closely monitor uh, the park areas and, and other uh, public congregation areas in their county and in their city and if people aren't observing social distancing, uh, to shut them down. Uh, that would be uh, like the mayor in Louisville uh, that has shut down uh, basketball courts in various parts 
of the city, something we don't want to have to do. But again, these are the lives and the health of people out there, and we're just going to do what it takes. And if that's what it takes to encourage folks to do the right thing, uh, we're going to do that. We're also going to give the head of our various state parks uh, the same authority. Now, we want to keep our campgrounds open, but we have a couple of reports right now of large groups that are gathering in campgrounds, and we can't let that happen. So again, don't try to be the exception. Don't treat, try to be the person that thinks that it's not real. That family of the 90-year-old the, the, the from the nursing home, it's very real to them, and it came to them. And so let's make sure that we are committed and that we don't think we're above this or we're different or we're impervious or, or, or that we're the exception. And that's just like those that are trying to find out if they fall in one of our orders or not, and we'll, we'll provide the clarity. I hope the very first thing you consider is how you can protect the people uh, around you because this is, a, this is a test of our humanity about how much we care about each other. I'm committed to making sure we're going to pass, and I know you are too. Uh, one other thing, if I can ask, because everybody is at home a lot, complete your census. You've got it in the mail. You can do it online, complete your census. And that sounds a little bit funny, uh, but folks, I will tell you, right now I am doing and spending whatever it takes to defeat this coronavirus. And as we eventually come out of this and we uh, rebuild or restock in our economy, and listen, I look forward to the day that that's our challenge, and I'm going to be up for it. Uh, the day that we're not fighting for the health and lives of our people, and that's our challenge, I'm ready. I will be excited. But it will be easier if you fill out your census. It will um, uh, set how federal dollars flow, uh, and it will be how the federal dollars flow after this in so many different areas. I know I've asked it to be your patriotic duty to defeat the coronavirus and what it takes. This will be your patriotic duty that you can do now that will help us rebuild after this. So please uh, fill out your census. A couple of other things we're working on, um, uh, reactivating recently expired licenses for health care workers. We're going through it now. If we're going to have the surge that we believe that we are, we're going to need everybody on deck. And we're working on some of the same for law enforcement. Now, I had hoped today to have a bigger uh, uh, formal announcement on uh, drive-through testing and how we expect to, to roll it out. And I will tell you, uh, I need a day to a couple more days on it. And that's disappointing uh, for me. Uh, but I've always been transparent with you, and I am not going to tell you that something is ready if I don't think that it's going to be ready uh, the, the moment I tell you. I will say that we will be doing uh, smaller tests uh, primarily in Frankfurt to prove the concept uh, that we can do this, and that'll be early next week uh, to a very targeted population. And when we roll this out, uh, it will still be for those that need it the most, because just like with personal protective equipment, we don't have enough test kits. And even if we get the ones that we expect, we still won't have enough. And so it'll be incredibly important as part of our test of being a good neighbor that those that don't need it don't take up those resources and those that truly do uh, get the resources they need. All right, I want to go through some steps that we have uh, taken and then get to questions and then hopefully uh, get you out a little bit early today because I've been losing my voice over the last uh, two uh, and a half weeks. So first, um, we declared our, our state of emergency and that has helped unlock resources uh, that we have been using as, as we have been going. I will tell you that we have had um, a, a better week than we had last week at securing uh, personal protective equipment. That is a good thing. And I will tell you, I will compete with anyone. I will do what it takes. I will spend what it takes to do everything I can to make sure we have the equipment and ultimately the testing to get where we need to go. It's what I do every day, almost all day, every day. Uh, we announced our, our website. That is... Uh, kycovid19.ky.gov, kycovid19.ky.gov. That is the official place to go uh, for all of the information uh, on uh, the coronavirus. Uh, as you can see, we've got some numbers up here. Uh, the number tested uh, is still uh, very low because we are not getting everybody's negatives, but we are working on it. We believe that number is well over 11,000 um, uh, kits or, or tests that, that have been done. 
Uh, we have our COVID hotline, 1-800-722-5725. And I'd like to ask Dr. Stack to come up to talk a little bit about the when to seek care. You know, as our cases elevate and as we see other states having difficulty in their health care capacity, uh, this, this behavior, uh, this approach that we've been talking about is more important now than ever. We got to get it ingrained in our psyche uh, because when that, that increase comes, uh, if we are, are ready, we've been talking about this, we've been getting together and talking about it every single day, it'll mean that there are the most beds and the most resources available. Dr. Stack. Uh, thank you, Governor. It's the first time I get to ask Kenneth for a slide. If you could do the when to seek care for me, please. This is really important, and I, I know that each day there's more of you listening to this show, and I thank you for that because uh, if you tune in here every day and you listen to what we tell you, I think we have one of the best chances to get through this uh, as cleanly as possible as a community pulling together. So you've seen the when to seek care slide, and this will probably change over time uh, as we need to when we can incorporate testing as a part of this. But there's some key points that I want to uh, share with you. Um, if the numbers continue to increase, as they have in other places, and as we get more patients who need help, you're going to have to really trust the health care providers that you go see at the hospitals and the doctor's offices, because they're going to ask you to uh, receive care in some different ways. Uh, they're going to have to set up processes where they evaluate you in a streamlined, rapid way. They're going to ask you some questions, and then they're going to route you different directions. They're not going to do a lot of tests, and they're not going to probably do a lot of treatments because if you come in and your symptoms are mild, the best thing you can do is go home, self-isolate, and just let it run its course. Now, if you get worse, they're going to tell you come back because that's what they're there for. And for the people who get worse and come back, then, then they're going to decide based on your, um, your evaluation if you need to have more tests. This is a challenging disease because there's not a good treatment for it yet, and we all know there's not a vaccine to prevent it yet. So when you see the folks in the hospital, what they're going to focus on is those people who need to have supportive care in the hospital to help you to get through the illness and to be able to augment or supplement your body so that you can uh, deal with the challenge that the virus and the infection presents for you. So this slide is, has never been more important, and it will become progressively more important as we go on. If you are well, do not seek care. If you have no illness and no symptoms, do not seek care and do not seek a test. The test will not help you. If you feel mildly ill and or if you have a positive test, treat yourself as if you have COVID-19, treat yourself as if you have the coronavirus, and stay home and self-isolate. And there's guidance on our website and that on the CDC's website for how you self-isolate at home. Try to keep yourself in a separate room. If you have an extra bathroom, try to separate yourself from the rest of your family until your symptoms go away. But if your own body's immune system is handling it fine, that's all there is to do. You just have to get over it, just like influenza. We need to keep all the capacity we can in the healthcare system for the folks whose bodies can't handle it. Thankfully, as the governor has reminded you repeatedly, people who are young seem to do very well with this. So if you're under 19, it is very uncommon to have serious illness. And it's still uncommon to have serious illness even in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s. But the older we get, the more the risk increases. It is really those over 60 and those with chronic medical problems, though, that are at highest risk for uh, dealing with this illness uh, in the most severe form. So we have to do everything we can to keep ourselves away from other people, to minimize the spread. And on that point, I'm going to say there's some preliminary good evidence that maybe what we're doing here is helping Kentucky be in the top 10 for a good reason this time, not for a bad reason for health care, that maybe we have been able to bend and blunt the curve. And so we need more data, but, but I'm cautiously optimistic that is that we go a week further into this, we'll be able to hopefully see that the efforts that the governor has done here in Kentucky with your active participation have helped us. So I said yesterday, and I'll conclude on this, this point, um, I believe that we are not here to force people to do the right thing. We're here to inspire people to do the right thing. The positive example that you set, the care and concern you have for each other, and the positive reinforcement when folks are practicing this social, uh, or this, um, social distancing is really, really important. So rather than focus on the few bad apples, who, who, let's focus on the many people doing the right thing 
and hopefully together we can exert that kind of social pressure that we need to make sure that those who don't understand how serious this is start to follow the rules because one bad person doing the wrong thing undermines all the good that all the rest of you are doing. So I continue to be very proud of the state and everything you're doing. So thank you very much, and thank you, Governor. Thank you. Kenneth, can you pull up our, our special video today on the Team Kentucky Fund? Uh, so as we have seen people coming together, uh, we have had offers. We don't have it? OK. OK. Um, we will have a special video on the Team Kentucky Fund tomorrow, uh, it appears. Um, we have a, a number of folks in and around Kentucky that have come together uh, that want to encourage people to give to that fund. Um, if we can at least bring up the, the slide on that fund. Um, it is um, a, a, a nonprofit that is going to help people out that have been harmed um, financially and otherwise through uh, this coronavirus. It is overseen by the state, which means we can track every single dollar. We have over a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, that have already been given, and we'll want to make sure it gets uh, to the very best places. Um, as you know, we have taken so many steps uh, to get where we are today, and people have sacrificed so much. Uh, this is game time. It's the most important two to three weeks that we believe we will face, um, and uh, well, we've already lost five people. And it's time that we make sure that we internalize this type of behavior uh, so that we can limit uh, the number of additional people that we will lose here in Kentucky. Remember that social distancing is not social isolation, but we need you to be healthy at home every minute that you don't have to be. And when you go to get supplies to go to the grocery, remember, if that is treated as a social hour, even if you're really excited to see other people, you will undermine the other sacrifices that you've made all throughout the day. So model the type of good behavior that we want to see. Uh, use the hashtags Team Kentucky, Together Kentucky, Patriot, and Healthy at Home. Uh, with that, um, I'll answer some questions and hopefully get us out of here in about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, have one. Um, so you all know we're trying to to model what we want to see in other places, and we're trying to shrink uh, the size of the room that you can't see here today. And it got a little bigger than it's supposed to be today, but I think we're, we're thinning out. And so we will have um, limited members of, of the media, about four here in person, as we go forward each day, but we will rotate uh, through it. Now, we had um, a couple extra show up today, one of which has been gracious enough um, to, to sit outside and provide us questions. I want to start with his question. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, I've talked about over the next two or three weeks them being critical. What are we looking to happen that would say we can start to ease back some of the restrictions and head back to normal life? So the next two to three weeks are absolutely critical in, in what's called blunting the, the, the curve. And, and Kenneth, if you'll put up Philadelphia and St. Louis, it's just a very good example of what blunting the curve uh, can look like. Now, but that doesn't mean just because the next two to three weeks are absolutely critical that we won't have to have uh, some of these restrictions in place longer. What they mean is this is the time if you buy in and we all are good citizens, then we really help people. This is the time when our actions mean the most to not spreading the virus. This is the time when if we're truly healthy at home, people that probably we've never met will be safe because of, of our actions. Um, our hope is that uh, we will start uh, seeing more news uh, that we can report back, and we're having new and different analytics done uh, with some, some partnerships to where hopefully we will give or be able to give, you know, whether it's week to week, uh, what we're seeing right now, and maybe at some point how long we think that it will take. Uh, but I'm always a little reticent to, to, to give you a time frame because it's going to take how long it takes. It's going to take how long it takes to defeat the coronavirus the first time. And while I like this slide because it shows how many people we save by acting very quickly, I don't want that second bump that St. Louis has. That's a lot of people who are put in harm's way. Uh, let's be committed uh, to winning on the very first time. All right.
Uh, the question is what percentage of the population are we projecting will be uh, infected with the coronavirus? I don't have a projection uh, on that. I haven't seen one. I think it depends very significantly on how much we reduce our contacts uh, because a projection with a business as usual on that normal line graph we look at in Seattle is incredibly different than where we are right now. Uh, as we are getting more data in and more tests in, uh, what I can tell you is I am, uh, I believe that we are doing better uh, than other states. I believe that we are doing better in terms of number of people who are, who are getting it, uh, but also we're doing better at managing uh, our health care resources. I have a written question from you, but why don't you, why don't you ask it here instead of me, Sean? Oh, you can give that question first then. I was going to ask about Perry County, but yeah, that, go ahead. That's going to count as one of your questions. <laughs> um, uh, has the st uh, I've said the state is being forced to bid with the federal government and other states for equipment in hospitals. Do you have a figure on how much the state has spent to date or plans to bid to obtain for it? Uh, I believe that we have already spent uh, on, on everything we're doing, um, $8 million plus. We're going to spend a lot more than that. I'm going to spend what it takes. Uh, we are going to get the PPE we need. Uh, we're going to make sure that we are doing uh, what it takes to, to protect our people. Yes. Trump administration is about to publish guidelines categorizing certain counties as high, medium, and low risk. That was in a letter sent to governors today. Um, first, your reaction to that, and also, do you want the president to use his authority under the Defense Production Act to expedite the production of uh, critical supplies? Uh, the question is about a, a letter that I have not seen from the president that may classify different counties uh, by how much social distancing they have to have. Uh, listen, they're, they're, a county line is something that we put on a map. It's not real. I know it's real in terms of, of government services, but it is not real in terms of the coronavirus. It's one of the reasons uh, that we have concerns and are asking so much for those that live on borders of states that aren't doing as much uh, for us, uh, as much as us in terms of, of, of the different measures uh, that we are taking. I believe we are one state. And at least uh, while I'm governor, we're going to make sure that the whole state is operating uh, under those same, uh, under the very same game plan. Because the moment uh, that we relax something in County A, someone from County B drives to County A, and all of a sudden we see a very large uh, outbreak. So if you are in a county when we ramp up testing uh, that still shows that you don't have as much of the coronavirus, because you have it, every county has it, as others, oh, feel lucky but also be committed to making sure that you continue to do what it takes to keep it that way. In many ways, that's what we are doing uh, as a state. Have you asked the president to use his authority under the Defense Production Act? I believe the president uh, has. Uh, he's, we were on a call today. We're on a call about once a week. Uh, what he has told us is he's willing to use it, uh, but he has gotten uh, right now cooperation uh, from various groups. Me, uh, I'm, I'm working with businesses here in the state. Uh, and. and Every business that we've called has at least tried to look at what they can do. We have folks that are retooling, and we have a lot of offers each and every day. Now, we run down a lot of rabbit holes, whether it's trying to get uh, PPE or whether or not someone can change their facility or their specs, and we appreciate them trying. Uh, but we have got not dozens. We've got hundreds of people uh, working on that uh, every day. Um, are there any coronavirus confirmations in state prisons with inmates or staff? Uh, we do not have any confirmed cases uh, with inmates. We have had uh, a couple of confirmed cases um, with correction staff, but they are not on site um, in, in the actual uh, population area of, of any of our prisons. And I have not had any report uh, from jails. Uh, we often see you use the St. Louis versus Philadelphia graph. Yeah, we use it a lot. And it shows a baseline for what the medical system can handle. But we have not heard what we think Kentucky's baseline is for this crisis. Uh, no state has exactly known what their baseline is, uh, and we are working every day to change that baseline. Uh, we stopped elective procedures earlier than a lot, and what that means is we had more PPE, uh, and we are going to have more facilities uh, that will be available, and we are already working on conversions of, um, uh, not respirators, ventilators. Uh, so every single day, that we have had fewer cases than others. We have increased our, our capacity. Uh, we are also working on um, uh, hotels that we can uh, turn very quickly. 
uh, into facilities that we need with extra beds. Uh, and we are working with the um, uh, federal government, whether it's FEMA or the Army Corps, on other projects too. Joe. You said it was a good week for um, uh, procuring PPE. Could you describe in detail um, what success that was and what is the, the process for bidding? Is this a formal bidding process or are you contracting with the company to obtain the PPE? Uh, the question was, I'd said it was a good week for PPE. Um, can, I, can I give details on the numbers and what is the, the process? Um, given details on the numbers would give a competitive advantage to everybody else that's out there trying to bid right now. And my goal is to do everything I can to get us as, as much as possible. The, the, the system is different everywhere, everywhere. I mean, we are looking um, in any place, uh, and we are procuring in different ways uh, than we ever have before. Um, we're having to, to put dollars in escrow at different times, so we have a product come in because you don't know that you're going to get the amount that they say they're going to send you. We've already been through that. You then have to make sure that it meets the specs uh, as they come in. Uh, and sometimes you make an order and, and they call you back and they, they say that it is not available. It is an ongoing daily process. Uh, but I will say we've got really good people. Um, and, and every day, uh, there have been a few other opportunities out there. We still don't have what we're going to need for a sustained search. Um, and my goal is to continue uh, to procure as much of it as possible so that we are ready uh, for what we get. Have we switched to a community spread, community exposure versus verified contact tracing? Uh, it is community spread. It is being community spread in Kentucky. That doesn't mean we don't do, in some instances, some contact tracing, especially in our smaller communities. But at this point, it's in every community. Everyone and everybody needs to treat themselves like they could be a, a carrier and a spreader of it. That's why the social distancing is so important. Daniel. Um, so we're starting to see some primary shelters shut down um, throughout the state. Uh, does the state have a plan for how to address uh, you know, places to sleep for homeless people? Uh, the question is on homeless shelters and reports that they're being shut down and do we have a plan? Uh, let me get with our CHFS group and, and give you an answer tomorrow on what steps are, are being made. Uh, I know that we have been communicating uh, with our various localities, but I haven't seen uh, that plan. And then if I can ask a follow-up about the, the situation in the nursing home in Perry County, mm -hmm. um, is, uh, is there any more details you can give us there? I mean, I, we're assuming it's a health care worker because they were shut down to visitors a while ago. Was that person symptomatic? Um, is, has it spread to more people? Through I, I think the local, the, the question is more information on the, the Perry County Nursing Home. I believe the, the county judge and the local health department are going to provide more information uh, tomorrow night, uh, tonight. I want to give them the opportunity to do that, and, and I don't have any additional details uh, on it as we're here now. Uh, I do not. I, I believe that they, they may provide it, uh, but we're going to leave it to that local health department, which I believe is going to provide that information tonight. Um, oh, is there a backlog in testing? Uh, well, the answer to that is, um, in many ways, uh, no, we are not limited um, by how many kits can, how many tests can be done. We're limited by how many kits that we have at any given period. And then our second limitation is how long it takes for them to come back. Uh, so to go through the process, to give somebody uh, a test, you got to have a couple things. You got to have the kit itself, which is the swabs and, and, what, it, and what it takes to, to do the test. And then you have to have the personal protective equipment for the person to do the test. That is the, preferably the medical N95 respirator, uh, though I know uh, we're using other things. It's some form of face shield uh, or goggles. It's the, the type of gown you need. It's the, it's the gloves. So if you have all that, you can give a test. Now, it depends on where the test is coming from about when you will get it back. You know, some of the national labs are taking five to seven days, and that is a challenge, though they are ramping up testing, which is a good thing. Uh, our state lab, which is now a, a smaller lab compared to others, can get it back uh, in some instances in as little as uh, 12 hours. We are working as we look in the future on testing uh, to hope to have something around 48 right now, uh, 48 hours. That is a fairly good result. Uh, in, in what comes back. Uh, the average amount of time it takes for a test to be processed right now varies really uh, widely. It varies by lab, um, and, and typically it, um, it is somewhere between 
12 hours and seven days, and I know that's really hard on people out there, uh, but if you have gotten a test, it is a good thing. Treat yourself like you have it until you get uh, those results. Joe. Uh, the General Assembly is working on a COVID uh, relief bill uh, today, but they expect to pass. What specifically do you need from them to, to help your efforts? Uh, the, the question is the General Assembly is working on a COVID relief bill. Uh, what do I need uh, to help with our efforts? I need maximum flexibility. Uh, we are living this battle and we're fighting it day by day. Uh, I need the maximum amount of financial flexibility. I need the, the maximum amount of flexibility if we have to take more uh, restrictive steps. Uh, we need the flexibility to be able to move very fast, to work with local governments, which they have responded incredibly well. Uh, local law enforcement, when needed, they have responded uh, incredibly uh, well. And, and uh, we really appreciate uh, just about every group that's out there, every organization of government, every nonprofit, uh, really stepping up uh, and doing uh, what it takes. You know, I, I set up here how I feel, uh, that there are no Democrats or Republicans, there is only Americans versus the coronavirus, but I see that. I mean, I see it in, in local governments where, admittedly, I used to think people were partisan, uh, or even certain individuals were partisan on one way or another. I'm not seeing that. I see, I see our, our local uh, governments, our mayors, our county judges, uh, caring about their people and, and wanting to do uh, what it takes. What's the inventory on PPE for first responders? Um, we don't have uh, an exact inventory. That would take, you know, every day asking that group. But let me tell you, it's not enough. Our first responders do not have enough personal protective equipment. So when uh, we are able to launch the drive-through testing that we want to, we're going to prioritize two major groups. Number one, it's going to be healthcare workers, first responders, those that are knowingly exposing themselves to the virus, oftentimes without the equipment they need, so that they can help protect us. We're going to make sure we're prioritizing them because we also need them on the job. And if we have a large number have to self-quarantine, uh, then we're in trouble. Number two are going to be people that are in the, the, the most vulnerable groups uh, that are showing symptoms. Uh, that's one way we are going to try. Uh, to help uh, certainly our, our first responders, uh, our firefighters, our law enforcement, our EMS, uh, and others. And I have a question of how many first responders have been tested and how many positive. We know we at least have had a couple, uh, but I'll work on, on getting that specific number. Uh, we'll take two more here, and then I'll do, yes. The General Assembly today, um, well, not the General Assembly, but it seems as if a, a bill to allow the Attorney General to shut down abortion providers seems to be moving. Um, it's on the consent calendar, so it could, it could just pass right on through. If that happens, will you veto it? Uh, the question is on a bill that may be moving to allow the Attorney General to shut down abortion providers, and will I veto it? Um, uh, this, is, this is the coronavirus we're facing. And every day that we focus on anything else, and I know that this is an issue that's really um, important to people in, in numerous ways, but every day we get together and we pass bills on other things, and every day we shift our focus, and every day we focus on something uh, that can stir people up at a time when we need them to be calm, I just don't think that we are doing the right thing. I haven't seen that bill. I don't know what the bill is. And that's because I'm focused every day on making sure that we can buy as much personal protective equipment as we can, that we can have as many test kits as we can, and that we have the right steps in place to protect people from the coronavirus. Now is not the time for any traditional battles that might have happened uh, between uh, various parties. Now is the time we all come together, we push every bill aside that might upset or concern people, we pass a budget, we pass any other bill that helps us with the coronavirus, and we go home. So on that note, there has been um, some people who have raised some criticism that the abortion clinics are still open when other doctor's offices have had to shut down. Is there a reason behind that decision? Uh, the question is about whether these facilities are open and others aren't. Uh, I leave it to our health professionals to determine uh, what falls in the elective or the essential. I have not made one single decision on that. Uh, my focus is 100% on the coronavirus each and every day. And you know what? I'm not going to get out there on any other issue or any other cause, no matter how important they are to me. This is my sole focus. 
because the, the, the surge is coming. We have increased cases every day. We got to make sure our healthcare system is not overrun. We got to make sure that there are going to be enough ice beds, ICU beds, um, uh, ventilators as we're working uh, for the folks that are going to need them in the coming weeks. Folks, let's focus on the national and the international pandemic and the health crisis that, that is at hand. All right, I'm going to read uh, one more. Um, what is the process by which the state uh, follows and following through the Kentucky Safer Complaints? Uh, will the Labor Cabinet or another entity investigate? Uh, so this is the number that we put out there just so that we could be informed if there were dangerous situations out there. The goal is for us to be able to have productive conversations and hopefully to make the type of change in areas where people might be further exposed to this virus. We are getting a lot uh, of calls. And now um, there are uh, two different um, uh, calls that you can make to it. One is a question on, on closures. Uh, right now of business or other entities, and the other uh, is if you're seeing something that you believe is dangerous. We've had to put uh, more people on it, and most of what we have had is is very uh, strong um, but good conversations where we've asked people uh, to start changing practices to protect the, the people around us. All right, we will be back uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Uh, let me just end again uh, by saying, and I hope you'll say it with me, uh, we will get through this. We will get through this together. These next weeks are the most critical. I need everybody to be as committed as you can. People we love and people we care about are counting on us, but I've never been more proud to be your governor. I have seen you fill up social media with positivity. I have seen you create new ways to connect to each other. I've seen you take care of the children around you and feed those uh, that would be hungry. Yes, we are facing a crisis where we often focus on those that aren't doing the right thing and that are spreading the virus. But what I see every day is folks that are doing their patriotic duty, doing amazing things for the people around them. Let's make sure we do more of that. Uh, we can flatten this curve. We can protect each other, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. Thank you all.